Welcome to the United Arab Emirates. We're here in Abu Dhabi, the largest of the seven emirates and also its capital. And this place is known for its luxury and its big buildings. It's all been created out of oil money. The amazing thing is that everything here has been built up out of sand dunes. This is an Islamic nation and here the cell phone tower stands taller than the minaret that calls people to the mosque five times a day. I suppose that's progress. There are more date palms in Abu Dhabi or the Emirates than anywhere else. However, Saudi dates are the best. <laughs> And look at the size. Mm. Yum. Abu Dhabi is famous for its gold market. And everywhere you look there are shops selling gold and jewels. As long as you look, everything's okay. So oh, lovely. Now we're at Abu Dhabi's Grand Mosque and this is the third largest mosque in the world and it can take 40,000 people at one time. This is the only mosque in Abu Dhabi that allows non-Muslims to come in. It's very, very uh, special. That's real gold up there. And here, to get into the Grand Mosque, you have to actually be dressed appropriately. What does it feel like in the sun? <laughs> Looks good though. This gives you some idea of the scale of this mosque. Interestingly enough, as soon as you put this garb on, you lose your identity. You, you just blend in with everybody else. And um, I don't fully understand what, what it's all about, because the guys don't have to wear anything. Um, but this is what they do, so we'll do it. There are four minarets to call the people to worship and then 82 of these domes and the courtyard here has been made of marble, all handmade. It's incredibly hot here but this white marble stays cool on your feet. How about that? And inside, the marble mosaic continues everywhere. The marbles come from right throughout the world, and it's all on a floral theme. There are seven of these amazing chandeliers, one for each of the emirates, and they're made of Swarovski crystal from Austria. And a major feature of the Grand Mosque is the carpet. It's the single biggest carpet in the world. And of course in a mosque the males and the females are separate and only the men get to come and kneel on this carpet. The women don't. So the overall effect in the mosque is pretty spectacular. Abu Dhabi is very much a family business. It was founded by Sheikh Saeed, and this is his son, Sheikh Khalifa, the president. They were originally a Bedouin family living in the desert, in all the sand. 
They built simple shelters for themselves out of whatever plants they could find. The living conditions were pretty basic in here. Actually, it feels a little bit hotter in here than it does out there, but I read somewhere they put leaves over the top to keep it cool. And of course, to look after their animals. Can't do without the camel. But then they discovered oil, and the rest is history. So nowadays, the sheiks have total control, and they very much look after the local people. So everybody here who is from outside works, and they have a really good life and get paid very well, but it's all on behalf of the locals, and the locals get paid about $60,000 per month. No taxes, everything's free. So the locals, the original Sheik's families, they do incredibly well. People have lived in this area for thousands of years. These are some archaeological remains. A little bit different to the lifestyle we have today. This is actually a tomb. And you can see it's divided into different compartments for various family members. So the contrast between the old Bedouin way and the modern Abu Dhabi way couldn't be more clear. They're like two different worlds. And here we have the Marina Mall, the new Abu Dhabi. And all the flash cars. And over there is the Emirates Palace Hotel and it's a very, very posh place. It cost four billion dollars to make and it's super expensive. They even had to bring uh, the sand for the beach over there in from Algeria because the local sand wasn't light enough. This is real luxury. And this is what it's all been constructed out of. Just sandy desert. And just to prove, it does rain in the United Arab Emirates. Two or three times a year, and it's <laughs> today. And now welcome to Dubai. And this is the Bujanara Seven Star Hotel, the flagship for this amazing city. So this is what Dubai was like in the 1930s. Just a small trading village. But then they discovered oil and the rest is history. Such growth and such development, it's almost unbelievable. This is Dubai Creek and in uh, 1970 that's really all it was, a creek. In the 1960s they discovered oil and that led to development here so that now 
we have the bustling city of Dubai. Trade still takes place here of course, but mainly it's the tourist trade. Lots and lots of different spices, many of which we have got no idea what they are. And the fabrics here are just absolutely beautiful. And lots of different crafts. And of course gold. The gold work they do here is really something fantastic. And if gold's not your thing, you can have diamonds and pearls and rubies and sapphires. Anything that glitters and gleams, yours for a price. Diamonds are a girl's best <laughs> friend. Markets like this are a very important part of the economy of countries like this. But perhaps this is what Dubai is most famous for. It's big buildings. This one's 82 stories high and Tom Cruise jumped out of the top there straight out the window in Mission Impossible. Everywhere you look you're surrounded by incredible luxury in all of these big buildings. Very nice. And this is the famous Dubai Mall, which is actually quite big. Inside there's a fairly impressive waterfall. And in the middle of the moor, there's a nice skating rink, not bad for in the middle of the desert. Yep, 37, 38 degrees outside. Seems pretty uh, attractive actually. And it's even got an aquarium. Massive one. And you can go and swim with all the fish you want to. This is the biggest aquarium in the world according to the Guinness Book of Records. You can buy anything here. Well, this brings our short visit to the United Arab Emirates to a close. We've enjoyed our time here. It's been um, great to see how uh, these countries have worked together to form one, and also how incredibly quickly they have created out of a Bedouin lifestyle this amazing luxury that we see around us today. And it's all because of oil but it's also because they all cooperate really well and they've got a really good system of using other people to do the work for them so that the sheiks and their families can prosper. So uh, thank you United Arab Emirates, it's been great to come. We've enjoyed our brief visit with you.